I think uh, first we should give opportunity to the audience because they have uh, uh, they have put some uh, questions in Q and A box. So let us reply to that. And uh, between two of us, we can discuss any time later. There is no problem. Sure, 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 sure. Can come out of the screen sharing so that people can be seen on the screen. Yeah, uh, no, the, uh, a lot of people are asking for the contact details of Abhishek. So uh, while I have this uh, questions, uh, would you like to take these questions, uh, sir? Uh, if you are you able to see the uh, question answer box down, the question of Abdul Aziz. Okay, uh, the slides on PDF format. Uh, since we are not recorded uh, uh, the the beginning uh, of the uh, keynote and the opening remarks and Abhishek, I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll request uh, Abhishek if, if at all possible uh, to share the PDF format of the uh, presentation. We'll try and share that. So I'll try and make sure. up. That. That's a big mistake from me. My apologies. Got endorsed with so many things. So, sorry. Uh, well, I would uh, welcome would you anybody. Uh, Let me take up some of the questions as well, Dominic. But uh, I would welcome anybody in the audience uh, who may be interested in either a copy of my presentation or opening a dialogue or a conversation. You have my uh, email address and contacts on the screen. You have uh, two numbers. My India number doesn't always work, but it works on WhatsApp. So you can send a WhatsApp message on my India number if you require. And uh, if you need a copy, just drop me an email uh, and I'd love to um, have a conversation and share some of this uh, presentation slides for your reference. Please keep the questions coming in. I'll try to address some of the questions, but my focus is, uh, is more on how fire resistance gets driven down how compliance gets driven correctly. Uh, I would recommend if the questions can come in the question and answers segment of uh, the q and there is a Q&A box in your Zoom toolbar um, because what happens is sometimes the chat scrolls up very quickly and it's difficult to find questions. I'll start with the question at the end that uh, Midun Sadan is asking that if bulletproof and blast proof doors are tested in my facility or our facility, no, sir, we do not do this bulletproof and blast proof at this time. We had an inquiry, but uh, the local authorities did not give us permission to do these kind of actions locally yet. So we don't offer this. Thank you very much. Let me look through. So there is a question uh, from Devesh Taylor. When you provide any certificate example doors, do we have any validity to manufacturer or simply go ahead and manufacture the product based on specification done as per the tested product? Uh, thank you, Devesh. This is a very valid and a very good question because in many countries, including India, there is a misunderstanding that the moment you see a test report from let's say a fire door manufacturer, we start believing that the product or the fire door which was tested in the laboratory is what is going to get supplied for your project when you place an order. So at the first instance, it is important to understand that a test report, a test report doesn't have any validity. And what I mean to say is the test report is only a snapshot, it's like a photograph of the sample, which could be a fire door, which was sent to the laboratory. That's all it means that whoever conducted the test, whoever supplied the material, whoever installed the material in the laboratory is capable of producing a fire rated or a considerably or a product that complies to a test method. That's it. It has no assurance whatsoever of what 
this manufacturer or supplier will send to you when you place an order on him. And this is very important to understand. And this is the key and the crux of today's session is that not only there is a need to understand certification and listing, a mechanism by which a third party body lists on their directory, the addresses of the manufacturers of given material and the exact traceability of what they can manufacture for which the third party will be constantly auditing the manufacturer for. And hence, the assurance exists, which means whenever a fire door is received at the construction site, it has a label which has a unique traceability number that can be looked up on the, on the, on the directory of the third party certifier or the third party assurer. Or if it is an intumescent chemical, a sealant, what is on the drum? What is on the box? What is the name? Is there a traceability available? Because that traceability will lead you to an online listing, which will show you how the component, the material needs to be installed or the chemical needs to be applied without which a test report or, or, or a brochure has no validity and no value. So uh, I'm glad you asked, but we have moved on as a commercial world that our reliance on just test reports needs to go down. There needs to be a better understanding of traceability. I hope Devesh that answers your question and it does not create more confusion, but I'll be happy to talk about this. So this is a question to our uh, GS Professor Baveja. Nursing Rao uh, is asking, uh, what are the distance to be maintained from HSC storage tank for the transformer? Uh, I saw this question. In fact, I was uh, reserving my answer. Uh, but definitely, since uh, Mr. Dominic, you have raised this point, I would like to uh, clarify that uh, the Oil Industry Safety Directorate standards as well as PASO standards very clearly specify what distance should be maintained from class A product, class B product, class C product, and the size of the quantity which is stored in a particular tank. So often those informations are not available. So that's why I'm not giving uh, any definite answer in terms of meters, what distance it should be followed. But I would like to have more details about it and we can discuss on one-to-one -one basis. You can either note down my email address or you, I can give my mobile number and you can respond to that. So we can discuss uh, one you can type the You can type it on the chat box, your mail ID, sir, so that people will get your uh, mail. Sure. So, nursing, I think you are uh, more on transformer. I think on Saturday we have on the electrical and you are there, you are regular into that. So probably you can post that to this question regular regarding transformer they are located and location the distance probably on saturday we can uh, address that so i will uh, i'll leave it to you know abhishek to take the rest of the questions yeah i'll take another question uh, dominic by um, ulhas barje uh, he has put a question in the q and a i'll read it out first to maintain the integrity of fire resistance materials installation at site shall be carried out by highly skilled manpower but most of the time, such skilled manpower is not available and the very purpose is defeated. How to ensure this or like material testing, shall we test skills of installers? This is a great question, Ulas, because in India, you will be very happy to know that a lot of things related to just this has been changing. Now, there are already uh, fire door manufacturers who are in the country and they are not only providing uh, installation themselves or training to the train installers. So for example, a fire door manufacturer in Hyderabad was explaining to me that how they now, they now have a tracing mechanism in place to make sure that the installers get the installation instruction and the building owners or the door owner, property owner, can have a maintenance instruction available by scanning uh, information on the QR code. And uh, the reason why 
probably skilled manpower is expensive uh, is only because no one is really asking for it. The moment a document like OISD's documents, which talk about uh, minimum requirements, any such procurement document puts their foot down that we need this because without the correct installation, the purpose of procuring very expensive chemicals, very expensive products, materials is completely gone. So it, there will be a demand and there will be people which are available. And I just wanted to share on the screen uh, that there are already published standards uh, and there are hundreds probably of standards, not just by uh, ASTM in the United States, but even by BSI and the Bureau of Indian Standard is open to publish some of the Indian standards on installation. But I must share that just like testing, any kind of testing, is ensured using an ISO standard for repeatability. There are ISO standards like ISO 17020 and ISO 17024, which define how installation or installers can be audited to perform repeatable installation or to audit the repeatability of installation. We as a third party body, are already accredited to inspect correct installation, not just of fire doors and partitions, but through penetrations and lots of fire stopping as well. And we do this internationally. So we'll ask good question. Um, whoever is the buyer, whoever is the user, the moment they are aware of what are the potential pitfalls, they will put their foot down. Let me uh, I, go through the I chat and look also, for any other questions. Uh, I would also like to react on this. Uh, you happen to mention in a passing way that most important is when the technical specifications are being drawn or being developed, if all these aspects are duly taken care during preparation of the technical specifications for the per part of the purchase order, probably there will be loose ends which will be remaining. So to plug those loose ends, it is important that our technical specification of the procurement document has to be pakka, if I'm using that Hindi word, has to be pakka and has to ensure that what kind of standards we are looking forward towards compliance, what kind of standards we are looking forward towards manufacturing, what kind of standards we are looking forward towards testing. Not only testing, we should also specify if the test is done and if there is a deviation, how far it is acceptable and what is not acceptable. So unless these uh, elements come into the part of the you know, procurement guidelines or procurement document, the gaps will continue to be there. And uh, people, those who are at the uh, you know, different uh, side of the commerce, they will try to take undue advantage of these situations. So the more we are aware, the more we are putting into black and white, the more it is good for us to make sure what we are looking forward, we are getting it. Even. So the if I use this word quality is what you ask for, you will get it. But if you do not ask for, then obviously it is in a limbo and uh, people will take undue advantage of the gaps which are there. And that could lead to a problems when the actualization of the quality requirement is there in the field. Am I right, uh, Abhishek? No, no, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. I've just be actually been scanning for some other questions. Uh, there is a question which I would like to pick up from uh, Vinay Deshpande, uh, who's a good friend as well. And he wanted to ask, he asks that, can you please state about field labeling of fire doors? And this is uh, at the least, I could say Vinay, a very, very interesting uh, thought provoking debate that can happen about field labeling. But in principle and in a sense, what field labeling typically talks about is uh, two different aspects, both of which come under the name of field labeling. The first is any fire door that has been out there and installed since a fair amount of time and uh, 
could have undergone changes like changes in hardware, hinges, general wear and tear, etc., and needs a third party assurance that the doors which are in the field and have been out there for a fair amount of time are still capable of containing fire or are still fire rated. And the second is, is almost like an extrapolation of the same where uh, the property owner suddenly wakes up and, and realizes that, oh, you know, 500 doors that we have installed are actually do not have any traceability fire door label and lack the evidence whether they are really fire doors or not. And these are two separate instances which can potentially be solved by field labeling. Or a authority who understands fire door installation and fire doors conformity assesses the drawings, the installation of the doors in the field, and often pulls out one of the doors and does a fire door test to create enough evidence that they can print or issue labels for several number of doors in the field, often called as field labeling as against the fire door labels which are originally need to be on the door at the manufacturing domain or from the manufacturer. I hope Vinay that answers your question, but if it doesn't, then we have to catch up for a coffee. Uh, there's another question by uh, Dr. Robert Girard. Uh, hello, doctor. Um, uh, what correlation is there between the laboratory testing you offer and discuss with the oil and gas sector? So Dr. Robert, uh, the quick answer is that we are accredited to offer uh, several fire resistance tests for ranging for from partitions to intumescents to uh, other pacifier solutions, uh, which are mandated in the oil and gas sector, oil and gas industry standards, which are referred in the API 2218 or the OISD 164 document in India and several others. Let's look at any last question or second last question, uh, Dominic. I'm just scanning both the chat and the Q and A. Go ahead. I, I I can maybe there is a question towards the end of Q and A by uh, Neeraj Khare probably for uh, if I don't know if Bhavija ji can take up this question. Let me have a look. Uh, Neeraj Khare, Mr. Neeraj Khare, whatever you have written is correct. And based on that, you can uh, work out the uh, POM requirement. Uh, because, uh, of course, it depends upon what is the type of POM you are using. If you are using AFFF or those sort of POMs, then uh, this formula is quite okay to be used. And uh, do you have any other, in uh, do you want any other inputs on this? Perfect. I'll take the I'll I'll then take the last question that I can see. Uh, uh, for a moment, uh, just for a moment, let me clarify. He has asked for the area, how the area to be calculated. It is the area on which the fire is spread, or the fire is there, or the area on which we have to keep the tank cooling. So that is the area which has to be taken into account. The circumferential area as well as the rooftop area that will be covered as a area which is required for calculating the foam. But suppose if the tank has already burst and the entire uh, oil has uh, flowed into the dike area, then you will have to take the dike area into calculation uh, along with the tank area so that you are able to do the firefighting as well as cooling. So this is how the method of uh, calculation is there for foam requirements. 
I hope it clarifies to you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavesha ji. I'll take the last question from uh, Saifuddin Atarwala. I think um, I think this is uh, Mr. Saifuddin, who I know as well. Uh, many installations on site are not exactly as per the listed designs. And how judgments can be given in India and who would be the authority having jurisdiction? Uh, Saifuddin ji, while this is a very open-ended question, uh, what we are all aiming to do by doing such conferences and, and webinars is to increase the awareness among the people in India about what is a listed system and how just a test report may not be enough as evidence for people to get the assurance that is really needed and just to increase the awareness that across each state where the authorities uh, are different because the fire laws in India, as I understand, are a state subject. They are not a country subject. So each state has a different fire law and each state is an independent authority in itself, as well as there are several sub authorities that have play, whether they are procurement departments, uh, the oil and gas sector, for example, can is, is, is an authority having jurisdiction. The airport authority of India, AAI is a jurisdiction, as well as several such jurisdictions. And unfortunately, they are not all at par at this time in understanding what is a judgment and who the judgment can write. But we are very hopeful by the initiatives that uh, Dominic is undertaking under blue and gray, as well as the relationship, you know, initiatives being done by the association called Focus, which is the Forum of uh, Critical Utility Services. You should look them up. These are all uh, congregations of people who are uh, working hard to ensure that there is a better understanding in India about uh, compliance and assurance. No, I think we, we should uh, next, huh? 570. We have two more minutes to go. OK. OK. We can pick up something. Let me try. Uh, Midun Sadan is saying, uh, Mr. Abhishek, is fire rated sealant mandatory for installing a fire rated door. I've seen people opting for grouting to seal the gap between the wall and the frame. I must say, this is not the first time uh, I am getting this question. This gets asked a lot of times and I have a very straightforward answer. Midun, we have to look at the listing of that fire rated door where it has been listed by a third party certification body and how it was tested and how it is listed. If it has been assured and validated using grouting, then it works. If it doesn't, and there is some individual or an authority who is claiming that due to this logic, it will work, then of course the reliance is on that third party body. But if you need fire resistance and compartmentalization to protect your property, or to protect the life of the individuals, you should call for the correct or correct uh, evidence. Yeah, Mithun is asking, uh, I have seen when we do audit here in most of the complexes, there are good fire door, say example certified, but, but the gap, there is a gap between the wall and the frame of the door. There's a gap. So what Mithun is asking, the sealant that they're using uh, is it a mandatory that there has to be fire rated, you know, according to the door? So this sealant, what they use? Is, I just answered they that. Fire? I, uh -huh. I just answered that, uh, Dominic. That's the question I just answered. The sealant. Okay. Hey, uh, there is uh, one more question related to the blast proof doors requirement for oil and gas sector. I would like to clarify that uh, all the control rooms which are within the plant areas, there the need for the blast proof doors is there. Whereas for the other uh, areas of installation, which are safe areas, 
there is no need for uh, for blast proof doors there we need only the fire proof doors like for example switch gear room or uh, mcc panel room or other facilities and infrastructure which is there we don't need the blast proof doors blast proof doors are required predominantly where there is a blast proof construction and that blast proof construction is required only in the control rooms because we do not want when people are working in control rooms and there happens to be a blast or a fire and control room gets disturbed rather than uh, people not being able to manage it so this is one of the reasons why the blast proof uh, not only door but the entire building is supposed to be a blast proof construction this is the basic premise based on which oil and gas sector is looking forward for the uh, you know blast proof uh, facility including the blast proof doors which are required for that particular control room which may be 2 plus 2 not by, not more than 4 uh, or 6 in numbers whereas major contingent of uh, doors will be the fire proof doors all right dominic yeah uh, uh, good to go uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen we have uh, our second series on passive fire again mr abhishek chabra will be coming on uh, 4th of uh, uh, feb march and uh, we will be talking about the standard in the standards of india standard about uh, the foreign country so it's more about indian standard bas we will be touching upon very interesting subject how bas uh, standards are you know assured that testing is done as per the indian standard so you will be talking about uh, that subject i would request everyone to join us i will be sending the link to join shortly so we look forward once again to see our fantastic speaker abhishek chabra on Both of March. I look forward to see you again, sir. Thank you so much, uh, G H Pavaja ji. Wonderful you. to have you. You know, thank one of the guru of oil and gas industry and the biggest thank trainer you. in the oil and gas segment. We look forward to see you once again, sir. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. And God much. bless all the participants. Have a wonderful day. A safe stay. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You. Bye bye, everybody. Thank bye. you. Bye.